How's it going everybody? So today I'm going to be showing off this old dumb terminal. So for the newer kids who don't know exactly what a dumb terminal is, that's what was used primarily in the 70s to mostly 1980s, even onward in like offices in the 1990s to access databases or just like a single system. So this isn't itself a computer, but it could connect to a computer and act kind of as like a monitor, let's say. So if you're familiar with MS-DOS, the command prompt that shows up on your screen, imagine that as like a terminal interface. That's the best way I can describe it at least. So I found this online, and the guy who was selling it was in Indiana. Uh, for reference, I am in New Jersey, and I decided to not pay for shipping and drive about 11 hours on 2 hours of sleep to pick this up for $100. And I've had fun with it so far. So let me show you the keyboard which plugs into this beautiful little screen. So this model of terminal came with two types of keyboards. One was like a standard PC keyboard you would know and love today, and the other would be a bit more accurate for like the 80s, called an ASCII keyboard. The layout would have been different. Um, definitely would have been a bit more compact than what you see here. I don't have a picture of it right now, but it was definitely different than this keyboard layout. But let me show you what you see when you first turn on the terminal. Okay. So now that we got this lined up, let me show you. So on the side here, there's a little button right there. So that there is the power, that there's brightness and contrast. So let's just move this back over to the side like that. We can turn it on. All right, so this is common on this unit, but I just have to press the E key on the keyboard to fix this. So this is a little bit of an error, meaning I couldn't save the settings from before, but there's not a lot you have to change in the configuration of this terminal in order to have it communicate with a modern computer. So I'm going to hit Shift Select, and on the keyboard here there is a little button on the end. That's the Select key. I just hold that with Shift, and we see all these little controls. So all I have to do on this computer is I can change the personality. It's kind of like emulating different model terminals back in the day. The, the most common one in terminal emulation software nowadays is the VT100. So we're going to be sticking with the VT100. And here is just how you can configure the uh, baud rate, which is basically like the speed of the serial connection. I'll be showing you the serial cable in just a moment, but we're just going to uh, change settings and configure that. And we are all set to receive information on this side. Now I'm going to show you how I... Uh managed to get a computer to work with this terminal. Alright, I had to uh, close the curtain over there because the light was glaring too much in the camera. But what I have here is a Dell Inspiron 9100. This came out in 2006 and was a pretty beefy system for the time. The hinges are broken but we don't really need uh, the screen up per se so I'm going to back this into the blanket and just prop up the screen like that. Another thing too I think you noticed is on the side here, this little thing popping out. This here is the uh, card slot, PCMCIA, which was a format used by laptops from the 90s to the early 2000s. This is the Wi-Fi card, so we can get our system connected to the internet. There's a great variety of other ports on this computer. Um, we have Firewire for your DV camcorder, and on the back is like four USB ports, DVI, VGA, we got a CD drive here, or a DVD drive, hard drive slot, but that's not really what we're looking for today. What we need is the hard drive, which since this uh, model laptop does not have a modern uh, peripheral for a um, hard drive, I had to get this uh, SATA to USB adapter, and thank Christ that this thing can actually boot off a USB drive. One thing I wanted to show you too was the actual serial cable that goes from the terminal here. Um, to the computer. So we have this going from a 25 pin port in the back of the terminal down this little cable that turns it into a 9 port which would have been used for like most serial ports in the 90s. The thing is this isn't the exact correct cable because there are two pins that are swapped around. So I had to manually swap those two pins around but in order to have the serial, serial connection working to the fullest I had to rewire every other pin on here to go into the serial adapter for USB. So you can see the mess of cables there are just barely in order to um, yeah, get this working. But let us show you now how it works. 
One thing I wanted to say too, um, the computer that I'm using on here is on Linux. And Linux was the only operating system I could actually see this thing working on a terminal with, which I think kind of sucks. I don't like Linux. It's a pain in the ass to set up. I mean, if you just want something simple, you get a Windows. And if you have a lot of money and you don't really have anything else to do with your life, you get a Mac OS. And then if you have too much time on your hands and you just want to suffer, you get Linux. So as you can see, um, as you can see, we're booting into a Debian Linux. It's loading the RAM disk. It takes a while on here because it is, of course, I, like I said, it's USB to um, this. But you think, oh, this is one of the Best Buy adapters. I've seen these. These are USB 3. Why isn't it so fast? It's because this computer is USB uh, 2, I believe. So it's only doing 14 megabits a second, which is phenomenally slow compared to, you know, if you had an actual hard drive in here. Um, this type of hard drive interface is the exact same as the Dell Inspiron 4100 there, which is like a 20 pin IDE. So I was like, um, I didn't even want to use that hard drive because it has my old MS-DOS drives on it and whatnot, so I'm just using this spare laptop hard drive I've had lying around. So we'll have this booted up in a minute and I will show you how we make it so we can communicate to this computer, computer by the terminal. Alright, so we got our little login screen. Um, Linux on these big freaking screens kind of sucks if you have poor vision because that's what shows up. I named my uh, computer Serbian, so that's why it shows up as Serbian instead of Debian for this. So I'm just going to put in my username, which I did, Smitty. Put in the password, that is the super secret password. And there we go. Now um, you can hear the hard drive knocking a little bit over there. So here we are, we're in the prompt. So now what do we do? Well, we can go to the last command in RAM, which uh, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that. Oh, it saved every command I did when I was using the terminal. Okay, um, let me check the c terminal now. No, so there is a way to automate the Linux machine so it can actually automatically open up a session on the terminal. I don't know how to do that, so I had to manually open it myself using a command in here. So it should be around here somewhere. We just gotta go back a bunch. Uh, da, 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 I'm, I'm surprised it even kept all this in memory. Here it is. So we go to, this is just the command that I had to make. So we run this and we go over here to the terminal. Oh, I forgot I gotta put in the password. Now we hit enter and we look here. Yeah, look at that, baby. We got a terminal thing set up now in in uh, the on the terminal. So now what we can do, we can get the keyboard, and I can log in again under here. So I could put in my uh, username under Smitty, and there we go. Password. Do that again. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but every time I hit a key on here you can hear a beep from the terminal. That's just to let you know in case you can't see anything like on the screen here that you are actually typing something to your server and whatnot. So that is one way you can actually get this to work on a terminal. And I tried downloading a few applications yesterday to see if I could get this working with anything online. Um, we're gonna actually, we can actually browse the internet on here too so we can go to google.com using that application and it loads up a really bare bones text version on this application. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to like actually search anything on here yet, but I can do like websites. So we can try and go to YouTube too. So we do application youtube.com. Don't try and be watching any videos on here though, because you're not going to be able to do anything. You're just going to be getting hyperlinks you can access. Which means this would be way better if you do like Wikipedia. Or even better, the Telnet BBS guy. And so if we go to Wikipedia, I think it's .org, right? I think it's Wikipedia.org. Yes, it is. So there we go. Now we can actually go on Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. So that, unfortunately, is all I could really show you on how to get Linux working with this. There's a bit of a whole process when it comes to setting up the serial port on Linux itself. 
I don't want to go through that whole process just to show you again because it is a pain in the ass. There are a bunch of other YouTube videos you could look at though to get that um, process. But if you guys ever do have a old school terminal like this and you have an old laptop sitting around, um, you can get it to run Linux and you can be able to play around on it like this. So I can just go like... Of course nothing's gonna happen. Uh, I don't have any cool files on here. I literally just made this just to <laughs> show, um, play around with it. But with this you could do anything you want in text Linux like command line. So you could get a bunch of applications that run in the command line and games probably. Probably even be able to like chat with your friends, email. Um, but I don't know how to do all that because there's a lot of a lot more processes, a lot of manual work you have to do on here compared to a Windows. Because Windows does it all for you. <laughs> it's like I said, Linux, uh, it's, it's for like the person who has a lot of time on their hands and wants exactly what they want specifically on their computer. You gotta give them props for managing to do that because they've been doing Linux for almost 25 years now. Which is, uh, no actually more than, uh, probably 30, 30 years, yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching my awesome video, and I hope you guys, uh, did you guys see that? Can you guys see that? It says like and subscribe. 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 Hey, um.